Okay, well, let's flash her up and see what's going to happen here. So. Welcome to Jim's Hangar. I'm here and I'm just, uh, I've got Marco from Verona building a hangar for me in uh, Pinoca, Alberta. Thanks, Marco. I hope it's not too cold for you here. So, actually, Marco's my brother-in-law, kind of, short-tailed brother-in-law in Verona, Italy, and he's got a construction outfit and he gave me this vest, which is very nice of him. So here we are in Pinocchio, we're just building this hangar. We did an earlier uh, earlier take on it and it wasn't quite finished yet. So what we're doing now, we've got all the concrete poured in the apron. The building itself is done. We're still running on generators. So as soon as we get the power, the power's hooked up, we're just waiting for the hydro or the power company to put the meters in over here should be this week. So that's what we're doing in Pinocchio. This this was the hangar I started first before I went to a taskman. And uh, now I'm here finishing it. I, I had no plans on having two hangers. I'm not even sure a year ago I had a plan to have one, but now I've got two. So. I've got a 421, a Cessna 421 in a friend's hangar over here. We'll go take a, take, a, take a look at it in a minute. But we'll just take you through what I'm doing with the hangar here. So I had this cement finisher here and, and I asked him, to, he was doing his saw cuts, and I said, make sure you put one in the middle. Because so often you go into a hangar and it doesn't have a saw cut in the middle of a door. <laughs> And you'll be on the side and you'll be watching your wingtips because you're not sure where that bloody line is. So if you're building a hanger, put a saw cut in the middle so once your middle wheel's lined up, your wings should be clear. So it's pretty simple. Boy, what a beautiful day. Tomorrow's November the 1st, or today might be, one or the other. <laughs> Anyhow, no snow yet. It's beautiful out here. It's, uh, like I say, it's one below or above. Here we are just out in the yard. Look at all, it's all kinds of stuff. Can't move in the hangar quite yet because I got a bit of insulation in the way. So we'll take a look at that now. So here's some insulation. I got a deal on it. And uh, I needed, I figure, maybe 200 sheets. However, he had close to 400. So I got him. So if anybody need the insulation, come and see me. Anyhow, this is uh, eight and a half to nine inches thick. And the walls here, there's a cavity that's the same thickness. So it should be a simple process of cutting it. Of course, I had to go buy a bandsaw. It's the only way I could cut it. I was gonna use a hot wire, but it's just too, too big. Bandsaw seems to work good. And I've got metal to cover it. So next time you come, Hopefully I'll have the metal and the lights and the heater and everything on. So I got the bandsaw here to cut. Now the, the cavity here is uh, eight and a half to nine inches, so that's fine. Except that there's a piece of the metal that goes back. So you have to notch each one. So instead of notching it, what I did is I took the bandsaw and when we go over here, we can see so what we did, we, we cut this uh, eight inch piece off, even though the space is almost nine, because otherwise I would have to notch each sheet. So I just cut it off top and bottom, and then I'll cut the center piece. So the center piece will actually come out here about an inch further than this, but that's plenty of insulation. So 
Well, that's what we're doing now. In the center bolts there, right in the top where the two beams come together, those two bolts there, I'm going to drop a chain link there so that we can actually put a hoist up if you ever need one. Because once the tin's on, you can't do that. Well, thanks, Dion, for coming around today and seeing how we're doing on the hangar. I think in a minute we're going to go over and take a look at the 421, see how it is. But I'd like to just thank everybody for coming today. And may all your skies be blue, and I'll see you next time.